Hey y'all, this week's episode of The Read is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. Win or lose, every Little League team still ends up at McDonald's after the game, and you can always depend on their Wi-Fi to be available when you need it. We all know somebody who's been to or had a McDonald's birthday party at some point in their life. (coughs) Me. And we all know it's the pit stop destination you can always rely on during road trips. That's right, girl. I'm loving it. Let's move on. This week's episode is also being brought to you by the great folks over at State Farm because they want you to know that you might be surprised. You can get great insurance at a surprisingly great rate. And what is also surprisingly great is the fact that we come back here every single week to check in with you and have you check in with us (laughs) and gossip and laugh Mm -hmm. and opine. And it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And with State Farm, you can get surprisingly great rates on your car insurance and you don't even need to have like VIP status or a blue check mark or Crocs. It feels like you're getting the special treatment that we all deserve these days. And State Farm's not just like any other insurance company because they've got the coverage that meets your needs for a price that fits your wallet. And that's why they are the best. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Let's start the show. And so here we are, folks, ladies, gentlemen, non binary mm-hmm. uh, royalty. Correct. Welcome back to the show. I am Reginald Val Johnson, <laughs> an icon. <laughs> and I am T.S. Madison. This is The Re. Thanks for coming back. Thank you for coming back, indeed. Um, just a taste off schedule. Um, it's giving throwback. I was gonna it's say, is it, is it off day. schedule? Like, cause this is still within a week of the last episode. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel like as long as more than seven days haven't passed, it's fine. And it's not late. <laughs> That's my justification I that I tell myself. <laughs> agree. Okay, great. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let's start things with black excellence this week. I mean, it's going down to some hardworking individuals at FAMU. That's right. Mm-hmm. Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University, bitch. That, what? Calm down. This is a nice segment. So, um, the CFO of Cal USA, which is like a big, uh, like a big skincare company or something. They own Jergens and John Frieda and some other beauty brands. Oh, okay. Big girls. And the CFO is a FAMU alum. And so they had a partnership with the school where they created a student challenge for uh, business students to uh, help create and brand a new part product. Um, that was specifically targeted toward extremely textured hair because, of course, right. and yes. <laughs> right. And so Wakati Hair Care was born and using their ultra superpowers, Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup. Nope, that's something <laughs> else. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Um, it says here on Because of Them We Can, Jade Fryer, one of the students, um, she said, Wakati was first introduced to me as part of a case study project through a course I was taking at FAMU. It was presented to us, the students, with no details about the formula or the brand. As participants in the case study, we were tasked with creating a full marketing plan surrounding a conditioner. My team placed first in the case study competition, ultimately bringing me to Cal as the marketing intern for the Wakati brand. Wakati means time in Swahili, it says here. Beautiful. And this is all uh, in an effort to, you know connect Mm -hmm. buyers uh with you know ancestry and culture and things that have to do with celebration of natural hair and the like um and since january we've had the wakati water activated advanced conditioner as well as a sulfate free shampoo wakati oil infused cream and a reactivating conditioning mist 
all available at Target, Walgreens, Kroger, Rite Aid, and online at Walmart. Okay. And uh, yeah, some black students at FAMU helped to create this thing, market it, come up with the logo, the name, the color scheme, and all of the things surrounding wow. it. Wow, amazing. I love yeah. that the CFO was an alum and was like, you know what I'm going to do? <laughs> I'm not yep. just going to homecoming. I'm going to put yeah. everybody on. <laughs> like, yep. Love, That's how you do it. love, love this. What was the CFO's name? Who was this? <laughs> I didn't see the CFO's name in the article, actually. Oh, okay. I'll probably Google it, though, because it's just K-A-O-U-S-A is the company. Oh, okay. Um, They also have, like, a scholarship fund that they created. $100,000 dropped right on there. I know that's right. Go off them, you. I know that's so. right. <laughs> Doing good shit yeah. over there. Unlike some other schools, child, got y'all out here breathing in mold and drinking dirty water, but I'm going to leave that alone. That ain't none of my business. Well, <laughs> shout out to fam you, though. <laughs> Alumni and students doing amazing things. We'll move right on to our pop culture segment, which is called um, Hot Tops. It costs that much because I ride in dick for hours. Hours. It costs that much because I take golden showers. Oh, my God. So you need to pay for this ass. Oh, motherfucker, come up off that cash. It costs that much because I'm sucking dick for hours. I have seen... I know you think my prices are negotiable. Oh, my God. But if you keep on trying in me, bitch... Shit will get real uncomfortable. <laughs> Feel free to walk away. <laughs> no, it's something wrong with you. Because <laughs> I know how much my ass is worth. So hear me when I say that it costs this much because this pussy is delicious. I. It costs this much because my head game is so vicious. <laughs> So you need to come off them chips or motherfucker, you can get dressed in dip. It costs this much because my oh, ass is the what? best, bitch. <laughs> I don't know. I'm the gonna... way I have seen people use that sound for making all kinds of art, decorating cakes, painting yeah. pictures, making buttons and shit. I just to get a little bit more specific. Okay, and you made one for the OnlyFans girls. That's fine. Yeah. It was brilliant. Not? I don't... When is the mixtape coming out? I speak for everyone when I ask. You know, we're working on some features mm-hmm. and okay. uh, a couple of remixes. We're Great. Very, you know. Yeah. We'll see what happens. I'm... Not dropping a remix or a mixtape, I mean, until I get my Flo Millie feature. Oh, okay. Uh, so Non-negotiable. There's that. Understood. Non-negotiable. Sorry, girls. It is what it is. Speaking of not doing things until we want to, the okay. Fuji's re- reunion tour <laughs> has been delayed. <laughs> um. So once again, if you bought tickets to something involving Lauren Hill, jokes on you, sis. Mm-hmm. Um, we love everyone involved. I believe the Fugees um had a tour. I feel like they like linked up for a show. Like, oh, it was something here in the city a few weeks ago where it was like kind of a surprise, but not really because niggas knew about it the day of. And then it was like, hey, girls, we're going to do some more of this. Yeah. couple of dates. And they were like three hours late. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all should have known I mean, I heard it was, I mean, it's the Fuji. Um, I'm sure it was a great show. But like, girl, I have school tomorrow. I cannot be up at 1 a.m. because Lauren Hill's vibes didn't align until 930. I cannot do that. <laughs> also, I no longer have cartilage. Or any kind of working joints. <laughs> right. Them so, shits gave up, sweetie. Mm-mm, no, they clocked what in are on now. I can't do that. Yeah. Nope. Um. So they had a whole uh, reunion tour set off or, you know, planned for, I guess, the end of the year. It's been pushed back to next year. Fuji's 25, which is apparently the official... Um, Fuji's Instagram because it's their 25th anniversary. Tour. Oh, got you. Uh, they posted a iOS press release. Well, no, this is more of like an IG 
Stories press release. Dates for our upcoming Fuji's 25th anniversary tour are moving to early 2022 to ensure the best chance that all cities on the tour are fully open so we can perform mm-hmm. for as many fans as possible. Mm, interesting. With so much excitement around the reunion tour, we are also happy to announce that we will be adding more cities and dates. Mm-hmm. Full details coming soon along with some special announcements. So more of us to be incensed when you are out there and the first song starts at 6.45 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say 6.45, that's not bad, but... <laughs> you niggas better bring your fucking at sleeping fucking bags. <laughs> dawn. Your travel pillows and shit, because you're going to be out there all night, girl. Bring sustenance. I told you niggas, like, Lauren needs a Chakras app. Mm-hmm. We need an app to track her chakras like a lift. Yeah. That way we know, you know, because nobody, I don't think uh, Mercury is in Lemonade anymore, but. Mm-mm, no, thank God. Uh, you know, you never know what's going on with her chakras, with her Rasengan, with her, you know. Her what? <laughs> all of the things. Her Kekai Genkai, oh. all of the things that she needs. Um, so I just feel like she should probably create like an app or a calendar or something to follow so that people know, uh, how long the pregame needs to be. Because I feel like when the stars are aligned Mm -hmm. and the moon is crescent and (laughs) tuxedo mask is in, uh, (laughs) I'll never get over tuxedo mask. That was the worst. (laughs) It doesn't, he doesn't look disgusted at all. It looks like the exact same nigga. He went to Burlington. Okay. <laughs> and then Sunglass Hut. Ciao. And what's and her name? And then pulled up to the fucking and parking lot. Sailor Moon over there like, oh my God, just so sprung. And here's Serena just like, who is Serena, this fine right. ass man? <laughs> or Usagi, depending on whatever the fuck your, your allegiance is like. But yes completely ridiculous and i will never forget the day that megan cleared sailor moon <laughs> do you remember when megan is telling me was basically like oh, fuck sailor moon yes, i don't she understand why it. y'all bitches yeah. want me to like it so thank much. you because that i said the same thing dick. thank you i said the exact same thing and y'all were like you just don't understand i said this bitch is dickmatized literally don't care about nothing but boys she was like 15 she was okay. a teenager of course she was the rest she of wasn't them wasn't that form. sprung the rest of them was not that sprung some of them was dykes and the rest of them was oh, not yeah. that goofy. They wasn't. And those were my favorites. You can't Everyone tell me. I think, was it bitch. Neptune? I was about to say, no, she 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 munching. She is. Oh, well, Uranus was the stud. <laughs> with the blonde, of course. And with be, the blonde, right. <laughs> uh, like pixie, Mia Farrow mm-hmm. moment. I remember. Yeah, that was the hard. Because they all thought that, you, anyways. Right. The all the girls were like standing <laughs> over. I forgot what her real name was. I don't know. But they all wanted to get with her. And it was like, surprise. (laughs) I'm just a simple stud-like lesbian, and I'm taken. And then Americans were like, we're not doing that lesbian shit. This is for kids. So they're going to be cousins. And that made it even weirder. I was going to say, that's gross. it was clear that they were (laughs) lesbians. But it was like, this is my cousin. Munch, Mm -mm, munch. No, nasty. (laughs) Like (laughs) This fucking place. (laughs) <laughs> all they did was change subtitles and or dubbing and stuff isn't so anyways what what were we talking about um, here we are the yes. fujis good luck right exactly and if you buy a ticket you know i just hope you don't have nothing to do for the next two days because you're gonna need you have to have the weekend off yeah you're gonna like i get i actually do get buying a ticket even though it seems to go against all logic if you really want to see them absolutely and your day is cleared like you don't have to get up and go nowhere the next day then i would do it you know if you can bring your own truly folding chair or something so you can (laughs) if it's like an outdoor venue i don't really know probably won't be um in the winter but whatever you can do to make it as comfortable for yourself as possible you know just have very low expectations about what time they are actually going to begin performing. That's all I would say. I don't even know if it's just yes. Lauren. I just know she's so famous for this that it's like, girl, you just, what else can you do? What else can you but do? But they also get like a little ooky, spooky, kooky, weird when they're together. 
because it's like it feels like sometimes Lauren is not feeling Wyclef, mm-hmm. vice versa, and then sometimes it's probably I true. Might be like fuck both of y'all. So yeah, uh, mm. also probably true. Like it may be some tensions there with them, but. You yeah. know, I would just say go fully expecting for this show to not happen. And then you can be pleasantly surprised when it does. Because like I said, the people who went told me it was amazing. But I'm just like, girl, you yeah, didn't get home till you didn't get home till 2, 3 a.m. <laughs> I ain't got time for that. Like when the show starts and the people are still in good moods, they're like, oh, you know, whoever's still there. <laughs> totally worth it. <laughs> Everyone looked great. I had such a good time. Oh, yeah. So it's like, you know, it's an adventure. Mm -hmm. It's an adventure. And if you have the time for that, then go on it and let me know how it was. But I won't be. And you let me know because where I won't be is Mm -mm. there. No, I don't have that many hours. God bless everyone. I don't have that many hours, but have fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Belkalee's found herself in a uh, new dragging when she took to Instagram live around Halloween with uh, an eyebrow piercing that I've never seen before. Okay. Uh, that gives me cunnilingus. Like there's nothing like an eyebrow piercing on a lady um, that just screams i eat box I have to like is there this. anyone who <laughs> ladies with an eyebrow piercing mm. when's the last time you ate puss because i don't even need to <laughs> ask if you do or not i feel matter of fact go ahead and stand up on 10 if you have an eyebrow piercing installed at the moment and don't do it, I want to. I want to know who that is. It's not very many. There, I'm I don't sure believe they exist. There's probably fewer than five across the world. <laughs> so, and isn't is Cardi? Why do I think yes. Cardi is bi or something? <laughs> yes. Why do I think she's fucked girls before? Because she has, or probably does, still now with Offset. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, she doesn't really shy away from that. Oh, I see. Oh, it was in this picture. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's a that's a homosexual. Good for her. And we're talking about like the old school. I ate my. I just tasted my first clit. Oh my god! Like throwback eyebrow piercing. Like it looks like she just got that. Yeah. Anyways. Anyway. So she was on live or whatever, clearly inebriated, and talking about how you know niggas don't really want to hear depressing music in the club. All of these niggas are basically making the same depressing ass song. Uh, She said, I came from the street club and now that I'm in the game and everything, I be seeing all these motherfuckers on Twitter like, you need to have rap, you need to have bars, you need to have this, that, and that. And then she went into this weird, like, version of, I guess, what conscious rap is supposed to sound like, but it kind of sounded like a mix between Doja Cat and Dylon. (laughs) This is why we don't go live while drunk. (laughs) You know. This is why. I've made this mistake. Mm Mm-hmm. Many times. Who among us has not? I was going to say, and I will again, actually, <laughs> to be I honest. I'm sure I will. So I'm it, I, It's who I am. Nobody want to hear that shit, she continues. <laughs> we want to turn up. We want to hear that hard bass. That's what the fuck I want to do. Um, And so it was cute and fun. And then she sort of trans- transitioned into... <laughs> um. The statement, all the rappers nowadays, all of them want to die. They all want to die. All of them. Mood. All these niggas need to stop doing not need to stop doing lean and smoking weed. They get money and they start buying too much motherfucking weed and too much lean. And they make that slow shit. Ha. I want to turn up. I need to, I'm tired of hearing the same songs every time I go to the motherfucking club. The club need me. The strippers need me. The bartenders need me. And then that's what the, that was the end of the video that I saw. Um, I just, um, so then she passed out. Okay. Right. There we go. And woke up the next day and saw the draggings and said she was going back to sleep. Um, spelled S H L E E P. So, um, couple things to unpack here. Cardi, fearless uh, when it comes to social media, um, except for when she's afraid. Then, 
also um <clears throat> the clocking of these depressed niggas in hip hop who are kind of she didn't just lie. she did not lie unfortunately so sad to say it did you really need to get on live though filled with Duce and or Casamigos Reposado and say bitch all you niggas want to die and we want to turn up get the fuck up out of here <laughs> No, you did not. Again. Jesus. <laughs> a little blunt, perhaps, though it was not incorrect. I do see how people probably got in their feelings behind that. It was probably a lot of niggas being like, bitch, you don't even make good music, blah, 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 or whatever. Like, I'm <laughs> sure there was a lot of that going on. Like, you might as well uh, look in the mirror, bitch, because you're not making the shit that you claim anyway, or blah. So, I mean, for, I'm kind of stuck right now on. Cardi talking about what she wants to hear in the club because she has a whole ass newborn at home. <laughs> she has two children who are not old enough to be vaccinated. One who probably oh, look, hasn't received tea. too many vaccines at all at this <laughs> point. Like that mm, little boy is less than two months old, I think, or right around two months. I, I just, can't count, but I'm sure you're in, you're in the ballpark. She and just I'm sure Cardi is vaccinated, but um. <laughs> The club just seems like the absolute worst place for a new parent to be, especially while a pandemic is still going on. Like, thankfully, the numbers are starting to drop, but it just seems woo, like Two more babies than and a, a panty. little. Right. Like, it and reminds a nigga me that you of, always got a kind of question. It reminds me of uh, Nikki having her fucking felon rapist husband holding their baby on stage while she performed at somebody's show in L.A. It's like, Why? Why would you directly expose your child to this? It seems so bizarre to me that y'all are doing this. Like, I know Papa Bear be like, so what are we doing? <laughs> what's the what's the vibe around here? He's <laughs> so cute. I'm not. The kids are so cute. He, they are. They are. They're the saving grace. Culture. First of all, did you see Culture have her photo shoot? Did I Nigga. see the actual living <laughs> doll? I said That's Cardi what I'm talking boo. about. You know Cardi wants to go and get a little bit of a buzz on because culture is a wake, bitch. Let me tell you something. Mama said what you're going to do is catch these angles, yep. good sis. Did. That's what you're going to do. Did. Get into this bone structure. Get when into she, these limbs. When she propped her little broom up on the wall, I said, oh, we're not bitch. ready. <laughs> we're not <laughs> she did it like Aretha putting that purse down like I'm actually finna go fuck it up real quick <laughs> I'm the moment as well as the era yeah and I've seen a couple of Cardi's lives where culture be wide awake it's 2am and culture be like <laughs> I want a chip or something yeah. and Cardi be like ain't no chips I don't want a chip or would like that little girl is Belle. running shit in that house I'm sure of it Bell. <laughs> Bell. I do not care about your little Instagram live. What you're going to do mm -hmm. is you're going to get into that kitchen pantry yeah, you and are. you're going to get me a fucking baked sour cream and cheddar. You're going to get and me you're some gonna fucking do it cookies. Now. <laughs> and you're going to do it right now. Cardi be like, no, it's too late. You can't have no sugar. <laughs> I'm going to tell grandma. I'm going to do this. <laughs> I don't Culture think be that like, you that heard what I just problem. said. To you. <laughs> you're going to go get in that fucking pantry. Grab the famous Amos, <laughs> and you're gonna bring it back now. Oh man, such cute kids, and I would hate for them to get COVID. <laughs> like that's just all I'm saying about this club thing. Again, niggas are ready to go back to real life, but <sighs> all right. In the club, we all fam. Nene Leak says that um she wants everybody to leave her the fuck alone. Quote. Unquote. Like, that's what she said. That ain't no problem. Um, That ain't no problem. I can do that. You got it, dude. All right. <laughs> so. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure she's grieving and all that. So you have your space, yeah. sister. She said, um, okay, well, she was on, I think... Was it Fox Soul? Somewhere a uh, show recently, and she was talking about how some of the Brill Housewives of Atlanta ladies had sent her um, a PR basket, basically. 
they <laughs> what had someone on set basically say, "Hey, y'all want to send Nene some flowers?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I guess whatever." Put my name on a card. Oh, okay. And so they sent her like some flowers that had everybody's name on it, and Nene basically, um, you know, stuck some shade in there about how they pooled together, you know, a couple of nickels and dimes to send her like a group gift, and I guess made it sound like that was tacky. Keep in mind, (laughs) nearly all these women hate her, and the feelings mutual, and so, um. You know, that was confusing. But since then, she hopped on a lie uh, where she once again Mm -mm. said that she's very sad that uh, Greg is no longer with her and that um, Candy actually sent flowers separate of this. Marlo sent her money. (laughs) Um... (laughs) Marlo is so tacky. I love it. <laughs> yes. Marlo gave her money. Um, Cynthia came to, uh, came down to the Nini, the lounge. Mm, yeah. Um, she said it was awkward for like 10 minutes, but then they had a great time. Uh, so she kind of scooped back in the Instagram Nini did and uh, tried to make it be like, oh, you know, it's all good. I wasn't being shady. I'm just sad. And all y'all need to leave me the fuck alone because I'm tired of you poor bitches. And um, mm, interesting. The end. <laughs> well, I will and, excuse it because of her grief, because otherwise this sounds right. very stupid. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, girl, how you mad? Agreed. Cause niggas all chipped in $50 and got, I'm sure it wasn't some like cheap, stupid bullshit. I'm sure it was a gorgeous arrangement, whatever it was. And like you said, you don't film on this show no more for a reason. Like I, the last time I saw Nene on Housewives of Atlanta, she was just like, Ugh, I guess I will go be around these dirty, nasty, dingy, stupid bitches for a little while. Like, it was like you were forcing yourself to do it. So, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm glad that the people that you are actually close to or considered to be your real friends reached out and did something else. But how can you be mad? I assume if I have a death in the family, you know, lots of my friends are going to go in together and send flowers or something that to me, that's a sign of love, not of, oh, well, we don't even really like this bitch or we're just cheap. So we decided to be rude. Like if I wanted to be rude, I wouldn't have sent you nothing. I wouldn't have gave one fuck. I wouldn't have sent condolences, a flower, an edible arrangement. I don't even feel like that's rude. I wouldn't have sent no thought or prayer. Like, <laughs> it's really not. But like, well, if I didn't like you. would have been rude is if I would have DM'd you like, yikes. Like ellipses right. and then that's it. Right. You know? <laughs> right. Or, you know, saying something terrible about your deceased husband or bringing up something that doesn't really matter just to antagonize you. Right. That stuff is rude. Or just housewiving it while you're grieving, you know, just yeah. keeping it the, the, at the typical level of petty and unnecessary. Yeah. So I feel like saying the fuck nothing altogether would have just been completely understandable given the More fact that once again, anything. yeah, you don't like them and they, they don't, don't like, like you. you. Right. <laughs> Girl. But grief, grief will have you. What were they supposed to do? Pay for the funeral? Interpreting things. I mean, maybe Marlo did, child. When they, when you say Marlo sent money, I'm assuming it was like twenty dollars, but she probably sent thousands. So, yeah, I'm sure did. Marlo at least sent her enough to go and get like a pocketbook or some red bottoms or something. But I'm also sure Greg had plenty of life insurance, and Nene still has her own money, and that she will be just fine so yeah grief i do know that grief no, will have you i feel saying like feeling all kinds of crazy things on all kinds of crazy ways so yeah i'm yeah. just thinking of it of a from the perspective of like you've lost your husband that you've been married to forever you've lost someone that possibly um was the person that you could go home to and mm-hmm. like who was a sponge for all kinds of shit right. you know now it's it's you being nene and just not having the support system that Greg may have been. Um, and I'm, of course, you know, she said she still had a garden at home because there was loads of other people, obviously, in her personal life that sent her things and called her and all that other stuff. But, yeah, grief is a tricky motherfucker. 
And when you're a grieving famous person and strangers feel entitled to your emotion or, you know, like checking in and stuff like that, I'm sure it's even more complicated. I'm too much of an empath, bro. I don't know. Like in my older age, I'm just starting to be like, but how do they feel underneath all of that? Right. Even like the worst of the worst. Not that Nina is the worst of the worst, but like... I'm Me just, too. I'm yeah. the same way. Don't study psychology because it will have you <laughs> looking at everybody's. <laughs> But it will have you looking at everybody's little shitty comments like, oh, what happened in your life to make you feel that way? Are you okay? Mm, This feels like a trauma response and it's being directed at me for reasons unknown. Ooh, poor baby. Like you just start to have all this empathy and start coming up with all these potential backstories for people. There's probably a power in that though. There is. Because one of these days you're going to have somebody who tried you and then respond that way and then they are going to be crying (laughs) a river. (laughs) No, you Sticks, <laughs> bitch. Like they will just no, not not that it will be delicious, but it will just be like, oh, there you are, mm-hmm. there you are. Yeah, so someone needed to give you this yeah. energy. Although you know, it's probably you're hurting. it's probably wrong of me to be like, I see the nine year old inside of you who is hurt because his mother rejected him, but that doesn't have anything mm-hmm. to do with me. Like I'm not gonna sit there and drag you like that. But mm, let's talk about but the husband. It helps a lot for not even for like getting people together but for your own understanding so that i don't feel inclined to cuss niggas out because it used Mm. to be that i would like really have to fight myself to not respond to people who are saying something shitty to me but now it's just like you carrying around something that don't is not actually my business and i'm not gonna take it on so snoop doggy dog was on a rolling stone podcast where he alleged that dr dre is currently working on uh new music for grand theft auto the video game now i bring this up as a gamer um and fan of the gta series uh just to say that i found this interesting for a couple of reasons now first of all grand theft auto 5 is still getting like constant updates we're not sure if this is something that is a true uh b for gta 5 or c for an upcoming uh gta 6 which they've you know uh, uh, reportedly been working on for quite some time or it could even be for the gta trilogy remaster thing that's coming up but the reason i bring this up all together is a because yes i'm a gamer and this like did pique my interest but also because i'm like oh i guess we're like in dr dre season and that's interesting to me he's also like headlining the super bowl halftime show next year Hmm. yeah we're it's not next year yet next year with mary j blige and i think snoop is also in that and some other niggas and um yeah i'm just it was another situation where i was like we're just skating around the uh, the, uh <laughs> the big 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 issues with this nigga so we all just gonna pretend yeah. we don't know what's going on okay because mm. that was my first um, thought when you said dr dre i was like oh the i mean wait was it dre the fact that there's, I was going to say, the fact that there's so many problematic n- niggas that I'm like, which one are we talking about exactly? But Yes, Dr. Dre, uh, infamous uh, abuser of women who yep. has, um, in, I don't know, the past few years done some interviews where he's been like, sorry, mm-hmm. sort of. Um, but mostly <laughs> after several women and uh, fans and allies were like so let's discuss this since no one's discussing this and since nigga produced a whole last movie and conveniently left out the part where he was beating the shit out of women right anyway i mean and nothing about um, this is new like this goes way 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 back with dre like to the point where i was listening to a song yesterday and ti had some verse on it and mentioned like dre hitting her and i was just like so first of all, I'm sure I've heard this before, but why is it just now clicking to me that like niggas be talking about this like it, it ain't nothing and it's no problem with it and like I'll beat your ass like Dre beat that bitch like what uh, 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 uh. and how do we end up here? It's just everything is fucked. 
everything. I was um where was I? I was getting my hair cut the other day and the nigga who was cutting my hair was playing what, what the fuck was it? he was playing this song what's the difference from dr dre's sophomore album the one with like um forgot about dre i think the next episode is on that album whatever oh right right, right. And I remember, like, when I first heard it, I was like, oh, I used to love this fucking song. I haven't heard this in forever. Like, here we go with this. And (laughs) I was just like, (laughs) Eminem is on that song. Oh, Christ. (laughs) And um, I just remember that when it got to, I was, like, just trying to sit back, listen to the song, get my hair cut, and not be an SJW in my own mind. I'm like, you know what? I'm just here for a lineup yep. anyway. Yep. Whatever, right? We don't even need to think about those things. And then it gets to the fucking, like, Eminem verse. And it's like Dre passing the verse to, he- to Eminem. And this is fully the e- the era where Eminem was proudly rapping about murdering his oh, mother yes. and his child's his mother yep. and all kinds of grotesque Woo. fucking silence of the lambs like ways. And that was mm-hmm. just his gimmick. But Dre has a line where he says something like, if you ever kill that Kim bitch, I'll show you where the ocean is or something like that as well. And then passes it to Eminem, who then talks about killing her and whoever the fuck else. And I'm just like, well, he should have been arrested. I tried a long time ago. He should have been arrested for the entire Marshall Mathers LP. Honestly, that whole thing. When I first heard Kim, the song, I was like, you cannot be serious. Like, I've talked before that I was frightened. With your baby in the car? Like, me. the way he would absolutely scream about his mom and Kim, like, oh, therapy is <sighs> ever so needed. It's ever so Just necessary. Christ. Talk Jesus. You got to let that out and not on wax, but as somebody who was like <laughs> a, a deeply fucked up adolescent at that time. It resonated. I loved that shit. Like, I didn't love Kim, but I loved that album. And I loved how, like, angry and not giving a fuck he was. I did. I, I cannot lie scary. about it. He was. <laughs> uh, I just saw a white man, and that was enough. And then he wore, like, numerous tank tops, like, wife beaters, and I, and then just talked about murder. Yeah. And but I there is like, so much of that. Like, that is... It's not even just these niggas. You throw a stone and hit a rapper, they have probably said something horrible, disgusting, like, horrific right. about women. But, like, DMX? <laughs> Fine. Bone Thugs and Harmony? Give it to me. And I think I was more comfortable, <laughs> even though they were also terrifying, and the Crossroads video literally gave me nightmares. Oh, it was it just did. like, oh, well, they're niggas. So, <laughs> but well, Eminem... Mm. Early Eminem gave me like corn and like all of the like yes corn like m- those metal rocker white people that I thought actually like ate human organs yep and bats and stuff like uh um, yeah Ozzy Osbourne and all that mm-hmm. um I was never into hard rock still not couldn't tell you a corn song or nobody else in that genre but um I think Eminem was less scary to me. Because he wasn't black. Like, I perceived him as less of a direct threat. Like, this is white women's problem. I think that's mm. kind of how I looked at it. Like, he not actually talking about abusing and mistreating black girls. So, I can kind of vibe with the anger. I don't know what it was. I'm grown now. Way past that. But when he first came out, yeah, I was into it. Sad to say. Well, all these niggas are old now. Let's hope that they actually know better and are trying to do better. Doubt it. And really, really doubt it. <laughs> Um, I mean, again, this information came from Snoop Dogg. So as far as I'm concerned as a gamer, he could have been talking about NBA 2K. This nigga could be making music for like Mario Party 13. So and I mean, and that's another thing. Knows? It's not like that would be some terrible mismatch either, because Grand Theft Auto, that is a horrible game series. It is awful. It is or awful. is it great? No, it's not great. It's not great. So great. No. Mm-mm. When it's my brother told me so that you could, great. when my brother told me that you could pay a prostitute and then beat her up and get your money back, I said, 
how okay, is this well, legal? How we've... is this legal? graduated from that that's no longer uh oh they took that out it's no longer a, a part of the oh look at god life. thank yeah. god We've graduated can you still from so you else. can't beat women or kill women anymore innocence i'm saying like not other whatever you are mm, you're hesitating too much you're hesitating. this should be a clear no this should be a nope. You cannot kill innocent well, bystanders. Of course, you can kill murder. You can murder innocent bystanders, but not. But you cannot solicit anyone for sexual favors and then murder them um, for your money back anymore. But can you, you graduated so- from that? But can and you? So s- now you can simply load up a rocket launcher and clear a block. Yeah. Okay, can you solicit a sex worker and then kill her or them just for the fun of it and not for your money back? See, this is why this shit is dangerous. I don't believe that you can solicit sex work in GTA 5 at all. Okay, I good. don't think that that's good. a part of the game I'm anymore. glad to... Okay, so just general murder then. All right. <laughs> yeah, just general old regular The way I have to be okay murder. with it. I have to be okay with like, I'm just, you know, regular just Regular violence. fun homicide. <laughs> to just take that like okay baby steps <laughs> I'm glad mm-hmm. because I was I mean and I was young then but I was really horrified that you could do that in a fucking video game yeah I even I when like GTA 3 was out and we were in the throes of the whole legal craziness of parents and the government being like oh my god what is this shit even I as someone who played that game was like this is horrific like, yeah. I, and this I remember is really being up. a kid and being like why would I do that <laughs> like I don't I don't understand <laughs> and I I had no problem like just beating or punching the shit out of like a random person who talked shit to me on the sidewalk when mm-hmm. the game came out okay. but for some reason like killing prostitutes in the game to me I was so just like wrong. This is fucked up. <laughs> right. I never understood it's why. one of those things where it's like, it feels like it has too much connection to real life where maybe people get comfortable doing it on the game and then they might feel comfortable or more comfortable with the idea of doing it in person or less likely to see sex workers as human beings. Like Exactly. So that's when I'm just like, oh, like uh, uh, no, no, no. The, the, the ability to just kill a person after you had sex with them or whatever... Like, like again you could kill literally anybody in the game any of the npcs right but the fact that they had it so that like you would get the money that you just spent back was That's like so gross up. yeah like what kind of message are you sending here to and you know that there are all kind of people playing this game kids adults it's like, yes the everybody. game is rated m blah 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 whatever but like i had that game i was not like old enough to have gca3 right. when it was out Right. I played it. Exactly. And my mama found it. She, <laughs> let me tell you something. Get this bullshit know, out of right. my mother fucking house. Oh, wait. I'm, the way I'm breaking the CD and leaving it on the kitchen table for you to see as soon as you get home. Are you out of your fucking mind bringing this shit I don't even think home? that she like read the news or anything like that. I think I was just playing it being bold. And maybe somebody on screen cussed or something. Like it was it didn't even re- never even got to the depths of how dark that shit is. <laughs> my mom was just like, "What?" Guns. My mama heard damn and Cursing. was like, "Oh, uh-uh, out of my home." <laughs> not Get in my this Christian bullshit. house. She was already not like big video game. My mom was the type who was just like, "What does this do for your future or your intellect?" Oh yeah, Nothing. mine too. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> mine too. <laughs> she was so crazy we could not say died when we were playing like mario or something right. she was like uh-uh, uh-uh don't be speaking death in this house uh uh-uh. so we had to we say, couldn't they, say fart. we had to say they fell in the hole Mm-mm, no we couldn't say <laughs> nothing that my mama was thought was we couldn't say nothing my mama thought was vulgar so like even if you didn't fall in the hole on mario you said you fell in the yeah. hole because you could not yeah. say you died <laughs> instead of saying fart we said ease my body Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. I, mean, I get it, but yeah, yeah I don't I blame mean, your you mama. About it. I really don't. Like, and you <laughs> knowingly had no business playing that game. You was bold None. to play it in front of her. You was real bold. Truly, you yeah, wanted it taken absolutely. away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you was done. <laughs> you wanted it out. <laughs> Cause yeah. why else would you do that? I have no idea. Oh, but yeah, I hope Grand Theft Auto is less 
problematic in that way. I really. It's do. always going to be very problematic. I don't think it's just it's just not going to be as problematic as it was when we were uh, younger. Yeah. But it's still. Violent. Still awful. You can still kill innocent yeah, children in the street. Star. Okay. Maybe not chill. I don't. You can't murder children. <laughs> but does that can. game? Does this game only exist in America? I feel like America is the only place no. that would allow this. Oh, it's a worldwide game. Yeah, no, there's definitely some countries that have to have that game banned, but I don't know. Probably the where. UAE. <laughs> where do you guys Yeah, do that's where I was going to guess. There was like, bitch, please, don't even think about it. Um, Ice Cube has walked away from a $9 million profit uh, after refusing <gasps> to be vaccinated for the production of a new film. I love it. Uh, Sony's upcoming comedy titled Oh Hell No would have starred. <laughs> Right? <laughs> the way the title is the reaction. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this would have been a j- an Ice Cube and Jack Black uh, oh, shit. buddy comedy of some sort, I oh, guess. Oh, no. You really fumbled the bag. Um, Nine million dollars. And I love Jack Black. He's so fun. Jack Black is adorbs. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, he is. So it says that Ice Cube and Jack Black partnered on this project in June. Uh, they were looking to film uh, in Hawaii this winter. <gasps> um, Jack Black had he Nick. had an injury filming a gag from the last episode of Conan that he was a part of, uh, but he was still attached to the project and prepared to film, but. Wow. Production was like, hey, we need our cast to be vaccinated. Uh, it's for the best of everyone, et cetera, et cetera. And Ice Cube said, oh, hell no. Okay, girl. And went and sat down somewhere, basically. So now it seems that Sony is looking for someone to be his replacement. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's been a whole lot of discussion on whether or not Ice Cube is uh, dumb. <laughs> I was about to say <laughs> I was about to say what word are you going to end that sentence with cuz is it like informed? <laughs> I, I <didn't> know. <laughs> yeah. You turned away like anybody who is rich enough to turn away 9 million dollars yep. and yeah. free accommodations in Hawaii during the winter. Like you could just spend the yeah. winter in <laughs> Hawaii for free like they're paying for your stay. And you are getting yep. nine million USD nine on top of it. Million Child. United States dollars. You got enough money to turn that away. I can't possibly feel bad for you. I cannot. I j- I, I mean no. Nope. And I'm glad. I'm glad about these vaccine mandates. I cannot lie to you. I know some of y'all are panicking about how you're gonna be a part of real life without getting vaccinated, but. This is a movie set. You know, everybody here has a choice. Mm. And if you are doing well enough to where missing out on this job don't mean nothing to you, then give it to Lil Rel or somebody and you can just go be unvaccinated in your home with your wealth and and spreading whatever dumb shit you are spreading right now. I can't fathom why have, you would do this, but it's your choice. You also have to think that when you're working on a production set, you're around hundreds of people every single day. As the like... As a part of the cast and lead, you likely are going to have uh, shots where you're like maybe in a car with someone else mm-hmm. and you can't be masked, obviously, because you're right. filming a fucking movie. You're going to have shots where you're inside somewhere also in close proximity or just like, I don't know, maybe you have somebody you're supposed to kiss. Like, who knows right. you, what, what the fucking script calls for? Yeah. So... You know, not every production uh, company or studio is mandating uh, people to get vaccinations, but a lot of people are doing their best to just keep everybody safe. And if some people feel like um, it's best for everyone's Mm -hmm. safety for their cast to be vaccinated, 
And it is what it is. And like you just said, nigga, if he can walk away from nine million motherfucking dollars and be Listen. solid and they can just go find someone to replace him, who am I shedding tears for? No, no fuck nobody. Body? Because the way I would have told y'all to Pfizer me up, bitch, <laughs> Pfizer <laughs> me up, girl, <laughs> and I will be there. And what's my cause? Boost on? me! <laughs> Boost me! <laughs> like, I mean, and to your point, like as a lead, you are one of the few people on set who is not wearing a mask and a shield yeah. and all that. Yep. So like, you are the biggest threat to everybody else on the set. Mm -hmm. These people and everybody else ain't making nine million dollars. <laughs> Plus, the director is going back and forth to you, right. and then the producers, like everyone, else, like uh -huh. you're literally like nope. at the center of a web. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? So, literally. if shit is not safe for you, it's super going to be not safe for everybody else. Mm -hmm. Versus, you know, someone who might be working a little bit further off or who yeah. can wear a mask more on. You can endanger again, your own life, but you can't do it to everybody else. I'm not mad at this. <laughs> I don't know about this story because Ice Cube got on, you know, Instagram live bitching and moaning about it. This is I'm reading this on the Hollywood Reporter. Oh, so it's fake. Please. No, it's not it's that fake. it's fake. Oh. <laughs> it's just to say that, like, he probably was like, no, thank you. And went and sat his rich ass down somewhere. So, I OK, mean, if that means that more people on the set of Oh, Hell No, can be <laughs> safe, then great. Everybody so, like, seems to be fine. But so why bitch and moan about it then? It was fully your choice. That's what I'm saying. I don't think that he did. Oh, he okay. didn't. Oh, I thought I'm you said he was like, on live and was no, like, No, I'm saying it's he if he were, then it would be like, what the fuck is your problem? Got you. Okay. But the only reason we know about this is because he turned right. it down and right. obviously PR people, agents and all that stuff yeah. speak to these publications and they right. tell us. So it sounds like he honest, he was just like, nope, I'm not doing that. And went and sat, sat his rich ass down somewhere. Okay, and now good. they're going to go and move That's ahead with I the ask. movie without him. <laughs> so That's all I ask. Everyone seems fine and they're going about right. things in their respective directions. Because niggas with bills and no money got vaccinated and put a mask on and went to work. Mm -hmm. I don't have it for you, extremely wealthy man who just decides that you don't give a shit. Last but not least, uh, Fetty Wap, trap queen rapper, uh, was scooped mm. up by mm. the FBI Goodbye. at this past weekend's Rolling Loud New York. Um, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, bitch. That is what FBI stands for, yes. First of all, of course, the FBI was, you know, sitting outside of Rolling Loud, eating hot dogs or whatever, mm. and just waiting to arrest motherfuckers. Because, I duh, was going to say, like, I'm not entirely sure that Rolling Loud is not a federal operation. It really might be they shit. <laughs> and they just fronted because niggas are niggas stay getting caught up at or around Rolling Loud. Has there been a Rolling Loud where someone hasn't gotten a license? I was going to say, somebody, somebody point me to the conspiracy theorists on this because I wouldn't be shocked. I really wouldn't. They was you literally just what? laid back in the cut waiting. But, you know, Fetty Wap also made it extremely easy for them by doing all of this shit. <laughs> I'm just always thinking, like, it's a fucking festival that attracts 500 trap niggas. So would you even be the police if you didn't have <laughs> someone down there just like waiting to throw niggas in the paddy wagon? That's true too. It's like a giant target for niggas breaking the law. So what else are you doing besides nothing? <laughs> right. It's poor um, policing to ignore this. So they're accusing the WAP of <laughs> totally different meaning now <laughs> completely different meaning now <laughs> oh no mm. they're accusing Fetisha of uh, distributing more than 100 kilograms of cocaine Ooh. heroin oh, no. fentanyl and crack across Long Island and New Jersey. Mm, 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 they claim mm. that they obtained the drugums on the West Coast while they where they were being smuggled over to the East Coast via secret compartments and USPS vehicles. Wow. So, uh, so that's what Louis DeJoy been doing. You know, 50 Cent is already mm -hmm. working mm -hmm. on a pilot. You know it. You know it where he got different heads of government agencies in his pocket and they all working together to do this shit. Please don't let 50 Cent make this TV show. 
<laughs> Please don't let him do it. <laughs> but I, yeah, I mean, especially and with everybody being super aware of fentanyl right now and it being laced in all this other stuff and yep. people dying of overdoses because of like a tiny little bit of fentanyl that you don't even know is there. I'm not surprised. I would not be surprised if they absolutely threw the book at this nigga. A hundred kilos. Oh, yeah, God. he's facing life. If bye convicted. bye. Yeah, no. And the feds, we all know the feds don't come for you without any evidence. They know exactly what you did. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah, the girls literally be kicked back mm -hmm. with their fucking Doc Martins up on a desk. Yeah, and they're just like eating donuts. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, can't wait for launch day <laughs> because they've gathered like <laughs> they've gathered materials and they're just waiting for the day time. where they can go off <laughs> they didn't had niggas around you wearing wires for weeks or months they didn't set down up surveillance to the ground. all around your home and your cars nigga they know exactly what you've been up to Woo, bitch shit throwing your ass in the Hate back of the it. motherfucking truck and then going to watch Rico Nasty before they pull off. Mm. Anyway, they say that they uh, pulled up on the doll baby obtaining $1.5 million in cold hard cash, 16 kilos of coke, 2 gr kilos of heroin, fentanyl pills, pistols, girl, handguns, girl, and a rifle. Girl. So good luck to the girl and nope. Masika. That's it. Because who even knows at this point? I hope you uh, stash some cash with your baby mama so that your children will be okay because that is it for you, nigga. They are taking your ass away. Like Can I said, they at least break down that 1.5? That, that cash out to they the baby found? Mamas? Yeah, how does that sure. work? The way if I found it, it would be, oh, we found uh, 150K <laughs> <laughs> uh, in 20s. <laughs> and that's all. Okay, bye. <laughs> Like, you know, these niggas got to be skimming some off the top for themselves. It's cash. Absolutely. They have to be, but. Yeah. Absolutely. You think they found 1.5 million. Mm -hmm. That's what they told us. Yeah. And it's wild. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, that's the real tea because it was probably more like six or seven. And everybody involved was like, doo -doo -doo, just going to. And wait a minute. You mean to tell me that you found cash, coke, heroin, fentanyl pistols handguns and a rifle but you didn't find no jewels hmm. you didn't find no jewelry that's not sounding right you didn't find not no a diamond <laughs> i know that brand name now not a richard malie not a single one it's not sounding right to me girls mm. but and what's really mm. crazy when you think about it fetty wap is not like the top of whatever this organization is it's somebody he's taking the fall for somebody <laughs> something mm -hmm. and he probably won't get out of jail unless he fully cooperates the, with the feds he gonna end up like alpo well he Oof. really might end up like alpo but <laughs> yeah. snitching and going to witness protection and then coming back to the hood anyway and getting lit up <laughs> really might god bless the children yep mm -hmm. so many of the children these drugs, especially with this fentanyl shit, I have a very hard time understanding why you would sell that shit. I really don't know how you sleep at night knowing that you're killing people. I don't know what that mm -mm. fentanyl shit is. Like, I, I don't understand how it's made its way into the mixture or I, I, don't, I don't know what y'all are doing with that, but I agree. Yeah. Like, how are we watching our own people die? so easily off of this right. and still carrying this shit around i don't get it right i'm not a drug dealer yeah it's sad um that's it for hot tops this week we're gonna take a break and then come back and read your letters guys Hey guys, now is the perfect time to turn your ideas into a website. I'm sure now that things are cooling down, slowing down, it's cuffing season, the more y'all are inside with your thoughts, you're probably like, you know what I should do? I should start a whole blog where I talk about all of the ways that my baby daddy has continued to try me and that he's, you know, living on the edge. You should. And when you do that, let me know because I will be there. I read it. And Squarespace will Squarespace will give you all of the things that you need to make sure that this website is ultimate and sickening and has all of the necessities. And buying a domain from Squarespace is incredibly easy because there's no hidden fees, no price hikes. Everything is right there in front of you and very open and honest. And you get to know your audience with your analytics tools. These include insight on page views, traffic source, time on site, audience geography. Hell, probably as many times as Kid Fury has come in to laugh at what you have had to say about your baby father. Um, <laughs> 
all websites are optimized for mobile, so you don't have to worry about doing some extra uphill running to get the stuff working on mobile devices and stuff. And every Squarespace website and online store comes with a suite of integrated features and useful guides that help maximize prominence among search results. So it's easier for people to find your website and engage with it. We've used Squarespace for our own personal websites as well as the Reads website. It's so easy to get a website that looks great, feels great, and doesn't require you to be working inside of Dexter's laboratory. So head to squarespace.com slash read for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code read to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. That's squarespace.com slash read. Offer code read for 10% off your first purchase. Have fun. Let's get back to the show. All right, folks, we're back. It's time to read your listener letters. Yes, it is. Send your questions to asktheread at gmail.com. We may read them aloud on the show. Um, <clears throat> speaking of starting a blog to complain about your no good nigga, we have a letter here from Marguerite who says, I am 26 and I have been married to my 25-year-old husband for two years and we've been together since high school. My problem is that I am not happy with our sex life at all. We were, How did I know this? She was going to say that. <laughs> we were both inexperienced when we got together, so we had a lot to Good. learn. <laughs> but after a minute, it was okay. <laughs> Don't, I think she's saying, you know, they kind of got it together after right. a while. Right. He had only been with one other person, and I had never been with anyone else, nor had I ever explored my own body. So it was kind of slow going. I expected things to get better the more we learn. But now I feel like he has stopped trying to make progress. In short, he is a pretty lazy lover. He has still, after all these years, never made me come. And he seems and it seems like he doesn't care to try. We discovered vibrators and lubes to help me out and get me there. But as I learned more about myself, I found out that if he would have just put some work in, we wouldn't actually need to use those things. Duh. I even got him that book called She Comes First about pleasing women, and he didn't read it. He actually said, why don't you read it and give me the Cliff's Notes, which is really Bitch. frustrating. <laughs> For years, I thought there was something wrong with me. Like, maybe I just have a low sex drive, or maybe I'm into women, which I'm honestly still not sure about. But Girl, you might... <laughs> Now I realize that it's him not putting any work, not putting in any work, because, of course, he comes every single time we have sex. Of course. Now sex feels like a chore. And I just don't know how to tell him again that I am still not satisfied. Please help Marguerite. She said that this is a boyfriend. No, this is her husband. They've been damn it together since high school and married for two years. Not damn it. (laughs) Because a boyfriend, you could just dip. I told you once. But Literally could have just packed yeah. a bag. Mm-hmm. It's harder to leave. Can. I mean, you can, but, mm-hmm. you know, legally, you're still tied to that nigga. Ugh. And the niggas be sitting up here talking about, like, oh, how marriage, this and that, and it dies in the marriage. When you don't, because marriage kills everything. You shouldn't get married. Because... And here you are. <laughs> yep. With a fresh open box. <laughs> just asking to be celebrated. And you're being lazy as fuck. Because of course you nut every time. Yeah. You fucking lazy ass nigga. Mm-hmm. And you have no interest. First of all, sex for me, and I'm an individual. Yes. Sex for me is so much more fun. And so much more satisfying when, yes, I am being pleased, but I am also blowing your motherfucking mind. Mm -hmm. It needs to be give and take. It does. So I don't understand you fucking open mouthed airhead (laughs) ass niggas who don't try to take your partner to the next level. Women living whole lives. Mm-hmm. Not nutting. This is this tragic. is tragic. Sorry. Tragic. And y'all be so motherfucking upset when you're the lady in your life or whoever the fuck listens to this podcast and then comes back to you with demands and nerve. And I'm going to continue <laughs> because I just don't understand how motherfuckers, I am still stuck on the pregnancy kick. Do you know what these human beings are doing inside of the bodies of these 
individuals that you have nutted in, that you have nutted in, and then they have to, like, they can't drink, they can't smoke, there's foods they can't eat for a whole year, basically, bitch, and then they have to beg you to make them bust a nut? Why can't women murder? Why aren't they just allowed to murder? Cliff Notes. Bitch, you got some motherfucking nerve. Turn off the goddamn ESPN 2K um, hype beast, bitch, and read. Learn something from this. Like, what? Why the fuck wouldn't you? I, listen. This is wild. It is. I don't know. Typically, in a lot of situations, Especially when you're married, I'd be like, oh, hint, hint. How can we maybe, you know, pass the soft hint, hint, uh, transition into a pettier state yep. of affairs? How can we do that? <laughs> um, and then, you know, we get into just straight up, no holds barred, <laughs> saying it with our chest. Right. You've bought vibrators. You've got lube. You bought books. Um... I feel like you've done your your thing, honey. Mm-hmm. So at this point, I feel like it's time to say, with clasped hands, directly into both of this nigga's retina. Yep. Either I'm going to bust a nut or <laughs> I'm busting it out of the front. <laughs> say door. it. Say it. Yes, me and this pussy is out. We are. Either I'm busting a nut. Mm-hmm. Or I'm busting open my suitcases. I am. Then I'm going to throw your things into it. Put them out on to the front of the doorstep. Amen. And you can contact your mama. Yep. For a place to stay. You can do that. Because what I won't be doing is committing myself to a marriage. Niggas. For the rest of my <laughs> days. <laughs> Where I have to figure out alone how to get myself there. We're not going to do that, nigga. This entire experience is 50-50. Correct. That's what the whole marriage shit was about. That's what the vows were about. That's what all of this was Sharing. about. So if you don't get me there, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Right. Do you understand what the fuck I'm saying to you today, nigga? Like, I think that it's time for you to just use your voice. I mean, the fact that you can come by yourself, but not with your husband's, I mean, says a lot because <laughs> a lot of women can't, they don't get there through like regular penis and vagina intercourse. And so a lot of them need to switch up positions or add in some toys or whatever to get. And that's fine, but it's fine as long as your partner is trying to please you. To me, the sex is not even the problem yes. here. It's the yes. fact that he knows that you're unsatisfied and does not care to do anything yes. to fix it. Like, if you, yes. I mean, is is he not open to taking direction? If you like, oh, no, nah, move it a little bit to the left. Okay, stay right. Just, oh, yeah, like right there. Like, just like that. If the nigga can't take directions and refuses to read and learn from for himself and puts it on you like it's your problem that he can't make you nut when you can do it by yourself girl 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 you're only 26 that's what i'll say i'll say 26 is enough time to start all the way over the whole way through all the way girl the way i would i mean I I would always recommend couples counseling, but I would try to make this really fucking simple for him. Like, I feel like you do not value me as a woman, as a person, as your wife, because I am telling you this about sex, which is important in any sexual relationship. I am telling you this about my level of satisfaction. And it's not like you're trying your hardest and you still can't do it. You just like, oh, well. I get mine. Don't know what's wrong with you. What kind of attitude is that to have towards your wife? Girl, say it now. And if he is not willing to do anything, he's not willing to go to counseling to work on his shit. He's not willing to learn about how to please you sexually. Just, I don't think this is the sort of person that you want to settle with for the rest of your days. For what? Also... You can have petty fun. I would. I would find like 
my favorite, I don't know, stand up comic who makes fun of weak dick niggas or something like that, I would stick in the fire stick, the Chromecast. <laughs> oh, yes, and laugh I'd real hard. I'd get some smart food, <laughs> white cheddar popcorn, and I would cackle with the fucking flat screen at oh, yes. maximum volume. <laughs> like, I would, like, I would clearly be identifying with motherfuckers mm-hmm. who are talking about weak dick niggas. Because if there's one thing that might get some action behind your nigga, it's fully emasculating him with laughter. Oh, yeah. And have your homegirls there, too. Go there? Have your homegirls there, too. And all of y'all watching a comedy special about niggas yes. with awful dicks. Screaming. <laughs> Screaming. Talking about, ooh, Marguerite, I know you can relate. <laughs> Clinking flutes and bellowing. <laughs> Fuck is this nigga talking about? You are 26, oh, bitch. Clear him. Yeah. Fuck you talking about. You have all the time in the world and you're not about to spend or waste too much of it while you're still young and fertile and your your uh, stallion knees are working on all this yeah, shit trying to chase a nigga to get you to nut when that nigga is not even trying to. Some of these niggas literally just still seem to not be able to know how a clit works, where it is. Me, myself, as a whole entire homosexual who has never truly investigated a vagina, <laughs> I feel more confident that I can make a woman nut than a lot of these niggas that y'all are committing yourselves to. And that, like, it's one thing if it's like I just suck at this Mm -hmm. it is it's a whole other thing where it's just like I don't really give a fuck because people who are bad at it can be trained and for people who got young who got together so young got married very young I would think that he would be very invested in wanting to learn how to please you his wife it just seems it seems astounding to me that this is something (laughs) that is even up for conversation like if you don't if you're not interested in making me happy, why did you marry me? Wasn't it like a wasn't it like a a badge of honor to have great dick? Like y'all don't <laughs> y'all don't like l- you know, want niggas used to take pride for women. in women yeah. being able and having incredible dick skills. Now you're just like, oh, it's a hole. And I'm going to get mine. Who gives a fuck how she feels? Gross. Well, you don't Mm -mm. need to give a fuck, honey, because I will get a fuck, but it won't (laughs) be from Okay, let's go, little kitty cat. (laughs) He don't want us no more, girl. That's it. That (laughs) is the moment. That is the vibe. That is the era. That is the state. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting the hell up out of there. Um, I hope y'all can work it out. Cliff notes. Bitch! (laughs) Bitch. How much is asked for from you, bitch? <laughs> Cliff notes. Lazy fuck. You've already tried harder than I would. <laughs> Literally. I, wish, I really wish a dyke would tell me, oh, I'm not I know that you're not happy with our sex life, but I'm not interested in fixing that. I literally wish you would. Oh, cool. Bitch, the way Bye. you will never see me again. <laughs> I wish you would. <laughs> I actually want somebody to do it now just so I can laugh because yes why else would I I mean not saying there's no other reason to be with somebody but this is a marriage I'm going to laugh in your face like Raven folding that peanut yeah. butter and jelly sandwich yes and when I come out of my laughter you will know that the fucking lift is outside mm-hmm. at the moment right. and you have approximately two minutes before they start charging <laughs> so I would get the fuck up if I were you, <laughs> I would go ahead and make other arrangements about, you know, what I'm going to do, because it's, it's not like it would be at all, except if he was the one never come in and completely unsatisfied with y'all sex life. It is not like it would be acceptable for you to be like, oh, well, nigga, figure it out. I got my nut. Have a good day. Like. You should not have to tolerate a marriage. He would somebody be fucking your second cousin immediately at home. the same day. <laughs> In your bed, girl. In your bed when you get home. Mm-hmm. When you talk to him about it, make sure you mention that you are at the end of your rope about this. Like, this is not something that you're willing to, you're not willing to tolerate bad sex for the rest of your life. You're only 26. Imagine never getting a nut from your husband for 50 years or some shit. Nah, I'm out. Set the standard now. Or start cheating. Set the fucking standard now. Period. We're married now. We've been married two years. How are we going into our future yeah. as a married couple? Let's do this now. Because if you think I'm going to sit back and motherfucking, you know, just nod my head at whatever fuck shit that you got to say until we got six motherfucking kids. And then I'm supposed you know, I'm raising all of them to see no, that I'm supposed to just ass. sit back and, you know, 
I guess, deal with whatever the fuck kind of nope, tone nope, you set nope. for the whole motherfucking household. <laughs> and God forbid I have any sort of child that identifies as a woman that also wants to date niggas themselves. And then, you know, who? what kind of example is that? Mm-mm. And I'm supposed to be, no, no, nope. we're going to shift all of this shit around. Yeah. Today and at the moment, bitch. <laughs> you deserve a partner. Yeah, okay, because you won't be. Who actually cares about you. <laughs> yeah. You won't pose in this family's water hole, bitch. Okay? Not so my water hole. Here's the diagram. <laughs> here's a pen. Here is some loose leaf paper. Get an education. Uh, I would also suggest, as Crystal said, couples counseling and things like that before you fully hit the door. But if that nigga commits to not giving a fuck, girl, I mean, you're young. And if he if he won't agree to read a book, he's probably not going to read to go to counseling. <laughs> So okay, like right? He probably won't. I'm just saying it because I think it's very useful. But I, you know, the, <laughs> normally niggas who are not even willing to read a book, <laughs> like, girl, good At luck. Some point, I just want y'all to like. Good luck. Demand more out of these. I think these niggas get away with. Listen. God. I mean, and maybe once you leave a note in the hallway, he'll understand. But you know that nigga don't clean his nails. Cut you, them. You know he don't. You know she do it while they're sitting on the couch watching TV and shit. She's yes. like, let me go get some. Yeah, like a baby, like you do a Actually, child. You act. You almost uh, severed the tendons in my legs last <laughs> night. Your toenails while I was are simply disgusting. trying to get some like. Oh I'm actually like half of my ankle is hanging it's on all, just by the bone. Bloody, there's because of your fucking toenails. Mm-mm. So I guess I'll do something about no. it. No, 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 no. Straight women are oppressed, but <laughs> but you gotta, you have God to stick up for yourself. Fucking bless y'all, no. my sisters. Woo! Oh wow! All right, Mark. And then you let this nigga nut in you, <laughs> and then here comes this whole stranger kicking you in the bladder. Kicking you in the kidneys, refusing to let you party and have a good motherfucking time, constantly vomiting, can't get up straight, feet swollen, no swollen. Mm, all of it. I'm sorry. I just. It's okay. It's okay. This is this difficult to understand. Girl. I do too. Marguerite, please let us know how that conversation goes. Let's move on. <laughs> To our next letter from Diana, who says, I'm 25 years old. I'm an only child. And my mother has been overbearing for my entire life. So I've just kind of learned how to deal with it. I do pay most of my bills, but she recently told me that she also wants me to pay my own car note and insurance starting next year, even though financially I am not in a place to do so. Recently, Hmm. I received a settlement from a car accident that I was in last year. Any time that I've ever come into a large amount of money that has my name only on it, my mother likes to hold it and list a bunch of things that she's paid for that I need to reimburse her for. Because I was always underage before, I just let it go, even though I've told her I have no problem sharing my blessings with her and I usually plan to in advance, but that I also feel disrespected when she takes it upon herself to take money out of my account. Her name is on all of my accounts, and she told me that she will be reimbursing herself for the money she spent to take care of me while I recovered from the car accident and plans to use my settlement to partner with our cousin to start an Airbnb. This is an idea that I had a few years ago, and she wasn't interested because, quote, we didn't have any money then, end quote. But my thing is, we don't have any money now. (laughs) (laughs) She has, <laughs> she has a debit card and a checkbook for my account where the funds will go. And she has no problem taking my money without telling me first or asking. I want to take her off my account. But anytime I have ever tried to create a boundary like that with her, she str- she threatens to stop helping me in whatever way she's doing. And <laughs> oh, yeah, she threatens to stop helping me with whatever she's doing. I just feel helpless and unable to navigate as an adult without creating strain between myself and my mother. Please help Diana. This is a mess. Your mama needs a fucking reality check. She do. Period. <clears throat> um, I can't stand when parents use the I'm your parent so I can just 
completely expose you to whatever for forms of toxicity that don't make mm-hmm. sense that are not at all involved in logic um and you should not even consider having uh, an opinion about it uh because i'm your parent mm-hmm. and i'm the reason you're walking around on god's earth um fuck all of that we're in a different time and a different era i loved the we don't have any money situation because you're right and it made me laugh and also um it's really interesting to me that you had this idea for an airbnb or whatever situation but your mama is taking this money that you got and doing it with your cousin Mm -mm. what yeah um you know your mama we don't I think that (laughs) there should be ways that you can communicate to her with words um, that you uh, that you feel, you know, disrespected and overlooked um, and all the other things that you're feeling without completely snapping because it isn't fair. It's not right. And it's kind of like gross. Like I hate when parents just kind of like treat their kids like chess pieces or like something. Like it's just something for them to use up. Yep. It's weird. And like we are obligated to funnel our income into your Mm-mm. pockets by <laughs> just by virtue of being birthed. No, I don't think so. Or, you know, you putting a Lunchables in my bag when I went to school because you're supposed to do those things yeah that was your job actually as a as a mother that was what you were yeah legally to do I don't know if you thought have to feed me that's not something I I'm supposed to pay you back for that was (sighs) literally your that was your duty I don't have to pay for the food you fed me you were supposed to do that you had to yeah so no so I don't yeah I don't know if this counts as like financial abuse but it sounds like it. Um, I didn't know financial abuse was a thing. Oh, yeah. But it's normally talked about within like romantic relationships where one mm. partner makes either makes a lot of money and so they control everything oh, to do. OK, so, yes, what fi- future is likely doing with whoever he's at least playing with now. Women. Or, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's usually what it is, where it's like somebody very tightly controls the finances puts you on like a really strict budget and threatens you basically with like you can't leave because then you oh, won't so have no a money lot of oh niggas. yeah oh yeah it's very common yeah it's very common but i think it can also happen between in parent child relationships maybe in something mm-hmm. like this but i would say to me the the first thing that you can do that seems to be the most practical is to open a new account and move your settlement money into that like asap if i were you i would do that today Go to the bank, wherever you, the same bank where you, your settlement money is, open a new savings account or something with just your name on it, and then move your money out of that joint account into that account with just you on it. Now she's probably going to have a fit. Yep. (laughs) Um, You didn't mention whether you live with her, but you probably do. Um, Sounds like it. And so if you are not financially in a place to pay your own car note and insurance every month, then you're probably not in a place to also pay rent and move out. So that may cause more drama than what it's worth. But this is just so fucked up. And I feel for you because you feel so helpless. It really feels like a helpless situation. But you are not the one creating the strain between you and your mother. You mentioned that towards the end of your letter. But this is not you didn't do this. This is her being Mm -hmm. completely absurd about your money. Now, if she wants to talk about, hey, you're 25 and, you know, I am still supporting you. Meanwhile, I got all the house bills to pay the rent or the mortgage, plus your car note and insurance. Then y'all can have a conversation about what is fair for you to pay her in order to live there. You are 25. But at least that, but that does not mean that she should have free reign to go into your account 
take your money and do whatever the fuck she wants to with it. Like you do still deserve that respect around your things. So Uh, yes, if she is an authorized user on your account and not like a joint owner, then I would just go to the bank and take her off the account. Um, But if it's also hers, then I would create a new one and move my money into that. Um, If that feels safe for you, like, I don't know if your mother is the type who would react in an awful way about that, but, This is one of those situations like this is why financial abuse is such an issue because people are really stuck between a rock and a hard place. It's like, am Mm -hmm. I going am I going to let you steal from me or am I going to be sleeping in my car? Am I going to let you take complete advantage of me and never have anything to myself and have my boundaries constantly violated? Or am I going to be couch surfing for the next few months trying to figure out what I'm going to do with my life because my mother kicked me out the house because I won't let her have unlimited access to all of my things like this is a really this is a fucked up dynamic that she has created that is not on you that is not your fault um and yeah i guess short of that if that doesn't feel safe for you then i would start um stock stocking up cash you should open another account regardless maybe an online savings account even and just start saving your own money that she can't touch um, and start making plans to get out of her house. If she refuses to stop doing this, then because like, yeah. what else can you? You can't make grown people do something they don't want to do. And yeah, unfortunately, your mom is not trying to hear no boundary shit. Like a lot of people's parents, they're not trying to hear that. They feel like they gave birth to you, so therefore they're entitled to everything you say or do, and all this other shit. But you are also an adult who is entitled to a respectful conversation. And a compromise that both of you can agree to not being treated like you're 12 years old for the rest of your life. Yeah. And I think that even if, um, like moving your money or whatever, if that's too extreme, I think it could be worth it to just say to her that you feel kind of like an object, you know, you feel kind of like a bank, you feel um hurt and used and you know i think it might be worth it to just kind of open your heart in terms of the ways that she's making you feel um as her daughter um if you know like crystal said going and moving things around at the bank might make things worse and maybe it might be best to just say to her like look this sucks and i feel like trash and it's hurtful that you took my idea and my money and you're gonna go do this and that with it and i am afraid that this is affecting Mm -hmm. uh the relationship that i have with you as your daughter as my mother and yeah Trying yeah. to have a conversation about that. And if it's like, if your feelings in that situation are also completely shut down, then it's like, okay, well, now you know what to do. Yeah. Cause now it's not Take even just like, you. it's not even like you're not coming at her with like, you suck. You're stealing from me. You're such a bitch. You need to treat me like an adult. It's more like, this is the way I feel in this situation. This is, and not even just like the immediate feelings, but this is how. I feel about myself and how I perceive the way you feel about me. Like, and, yeah. and like if Yuri said, if she is still completely unresponsive and is like, what's yours is mine, then I mean, I don't, there's little else you can do other than start planning for your, your escape, which is sad and frustrating, but I really don't, I really don't know what else you know, you can do short of just yanking all your money away from her and being like tough titties. But mm-hmm. hopefully, I mean, I'm I'm really hoping that when you talk to her about it, she'll understand how hurtful this is. And maybe she's like, listen, I'm just resentful because I pay all the household bills around here and I need some help. And that's fair. And you can y'all can talk about that, though. It doesn't mean she should be able to just mm-hmm. take your shit. So. Yeah, yeah, because that's what you do when you have respect for people and you respect them as autonomous adults. 
that's what you do. even if you get to a, a healthier place where she is still a little bit she is involved in your finances a bit but it's from a more respective place a more collaborative right. thing right. and it feels help like then that's fine versus her just taking your damn money and being like sit your ass down somewhere I'm your mama and get over right. it like, that when, doesn't help anybody <laughs> when I was a teenager and my mother was on my or in my early 20s when I was in college the first time and my mother's name was on my account. It was so she could put ten dollars in there every now and then, so I would not starve. <laughs> starve. Or so I would have gas money. My right. mama was never taking money out of my account. Like, girl, how you go steal from the poor. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was so she could put money in my account, like transfers back and forth, that sort of thing, without it being some, you know, huge deal and having to go up to the bank. Girl, it was get not a so she could take from yeah. me. Yeah. So no, you hungry. Yeah. Good luck. Um, let us know how that conversation goes. Really interested to hear back from both of you. Let's go ahead and wrap up the questions right there for this week. Again, send yours to ask the read at gmail.com. We're going to take another quick break and be right back. Hey, y'all. Gaps in your diet definitely should not be ignored. Over 97 percent of women aged 19 to 50 are not getting enough vitamin D in their diet for real the real vitamin D and 95% are not getting their recommended daily intake of key omega threes. That's where rituals multivitamin comes in. They're essential for women. 18 plus multivitamin was formulated by exhaustive research to help fill nutrient gaps in the diets of women age 18 plus, And it's formulated with nutrients to help support brain health, bone health, blood health, and provide antioxidant support. I've been taking this ritual essential for women multivitamin for a while. And I absolutely love it. I've noticed such a difference in my mood and energy levels, but Ritual didn't stop there. They invested in a gold standard university-led clinical trial to prove the impact of this multivitamin and the results, girl. Essential for Women 18 Plus was shown to increase vitamin D levels by 43% and omega-3 DHA levels by 41% in just 12 weeks. Ritual is committed to third-party testing from USP and the non-GMO project, traceable and vegan-friendly ingredients, and always clear communication with no shady stuff. And right now they are offering y'all 10% off your first three months. So visit ritual.com slash the read to turn your healthy habits into a ritual. Again, that's 10% off. Just go to ritual.com slash the R-E-A-D. Let them know if and Crystal sent you and let's wrap up the show. Okay. We're back. And it is time now for our listener letters. I mean, <laughs> so close. <laughs> It's time for the read. You want me to go first or? Yes, please. Okay. Well, I am going to pass my read this week. Pass the read like we used to. Oh, fancy. To Nancy. Nancy sent us an email about her roommate. Um, And here it goes. I just want to send a quick read to my roommate, Spencer, for using up my last bottle of Texas pea hot sauce. <laughs> Oh my God. You need to know that I was born and raised in North Carolina. And one thing about us is that we love our Texas Pete hot sauce. It's not actually made in Texas, even though it says Texas. It is a North Carolina original. And since Texas oh. Pete is not available where I live now, I always make sure to bring a bottle back with me whenever I go back home. Well, See, today it is. It is. And I understand because it is some shit that I can usually only get in Oklahoma. And bitch, if somebody ate. Okay. Okay. See, this is not yeah. even about me. I'm getting carried yeah. away. Yeah. yeah. Well, today, lo and behold, I went to grab my Texas Pete from the fridge for some vegan crab cakes I made, and my shit was gone. Mm -hmm. Spencer, you annoying little twerp ass bitch. This read is for you because you have frustrated me threefold on today. First of all, I try to keep my shit nice and neat in that overstuffed fridge. Everybody knows that I keep my shit to the left side on the second and third shelf. So the fact that I couldn't find my Texas pee right away meant that I was going to have to sift through the hordes of bullshit that you haphazardly toss on the shelves. Which begs the question, why the fuck do you consistently leave so much rotting food and empty hummus containers in the refrigerator? And why would you leave a whole cardboard case in that bitch when you only have one beer left? Either drink that last beer and vomit or take the beer out and toss the fucking cardboard in the damn recycling. Now, after scouring the fridge shelves for, shelves for just enough time for my crab cakes to get cold, I finally concluded that my Texas Pete was nowhere to be found. But of course, you already knew that, didn't you, Spencer? What really frustrates me is if you had simply turned your stupid Spencer head 90 degrees to the left, you would have seen not one, not two, not even three 
but eight other assorted bottles of hot sauce that sit in that overflow of condiments in our refrigerator door. So again, why did you have to eat all of my Texas Pete, which I specifically set aside from the rest of that bullshit? And that brings me to my last point. If you didn't know, Spencer, I intentionally used my bottles of Texas Pete sparingly, meaning you gobbled up my whole last bottle with your loud chip crunching ass. I brought that bottle back from North Carolina in June. Since I traveled a lot for work over the summer, I have barely even been home enough to use that shit. Fuck me for not saying something before when I realized that the bottle was looking a little spent, but I figured you would have just gotten the hint when I went out of my way to hide it behind a bunch of my other stuff. I did not expect your ass to go searching for it. God damn. I hate you for doing this to me. You ate all my Texas Pete hot sauce, and now I have to wait till December when I'm back home to get it because ordering it online somehow does not feel the same. Either way, you fucked up. (laughs) I don't know why she said it, though. Either way, you fucked up, and I may not be able to get my hot sauce back, but I will enjoy watching you squirm like the coward that you are when I bring this up to your bitch ass face to face. Fuck right mm-hmm. off, Nancy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nancy, I just had to say, bitch, I understand. I do. I do. It was a long time. There's a barbecue sauce from Oklahoma called Head Country. Yes. For the longest time, you got I. It. I thought it was called Head in Country. Everybody, we thought we called it Head in Country for years. I don't know. You niggas just love jazz and stuff up in certain letters. Yeah, we don't call things where they don't belong. Right. That's not fun. But for the longest time, I could not get Head Country outside of Oklahoma. And so when I went home, I would come back with like two bottles. Be like, y'all don't know nothing about this here. Y'all up here eating some shit I ain't never heard. Craft or some shit. I'm so sorry to that bottle. But girl, I'm not. I have real barbecue sauce here. Like, I have my shit that is hard to get. I went out of my way for it. And most importantly, again, it belongs to me. It's so nice. the fact that there is all like, clearly Spencer enjoys the taste of Texas Pete. But if you're going to eat something that doesn't belong to you, something that belongs to your roommate, it would seem like common decency to order a replacement, to go out. And order or purchase yourself at the store and bring it back to the house and be like, girl, I was so hungry. I ate the last of your frozen burritos or something. But then I went down to the Safeway and got you some more. Like, whatever it is, it would just be the decent, respectful thing to do. So the fact that that nigga sat there and ate up all your Texas Pete, like you hid it and he went scourging through the icebox to find your Texas Pete. Oh, yeah, no, I'm cussing him out. It's going to be terrible. It's going to be awful. It's going to be the dragging of the century. Yeah, it and is. I want the you <laughs> to understand, bitch, what's mine is mine. And what's mine is mine. Mm-hmm. And back the fuck up. And I'm not explaining anything to anybody else. I don't sit it. there. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> and go through I your shit. strolled my ass down to the fucking bodega on the corner and got it. Because guess what? I didn't want to walk to the fucking bodega. I wanted to walk through the refrigerator, bitch. So I don't care where. Yeah. But you mean to tell me this motherfucking. Of course you love it. Of course you think it's sickening, bitch. Because it's one of a kind and you can't find it nowhere. And your eyes probably lit up when you saw it. Like, ooh, what's this? Let me try it. But you know what you should have done, bitch? Ask for <laughs> fucking permission. Yes. You should have come to me and said, may I get a dab of it so that I could tell you, no, bitch, go and get some of yourself. You can order it online. It's not the same when I do it, but maybe it'll be fine for you because you don't know what the fuck it's supposed to taste like any goddamn way. Don't touch my things. The end. The end. The end. And I'm sure your vegan crab cakes needed that hot sauce, girl. That ain't nothing but chickpeas I'm and lemon sure juice. I'm sure they needed it real bad. <laughs> What'd you make that with? Collie Hearts of palm. <laughs> Yeah, them hearts of palm need some fucking hot sauce. Asparagus cakes. <laughs> I would have been irate. Ooh. Nancy, bless your heart. I hope you drug that nigga <laughs> to the ends of the earth. And yeah, that's it for me. Okay, well, for me, I will say two very quick things. One, um, where should I start? Which one? Let's see. Okay. One, I will say that uh, I've seen this phrase a couple of times on um, Instagram quotes and um, tanks at the gym and um, laptop cases and places for people who think that they're fancy and inspirational um, and probably like really love Umar Johnson or Kevin Samuels. Oh, no. The quote is, um, nobody cares, work harder. 
Um, and I just think that this is the dumbest fucking pointless passive fucking phrase. Um, you can encourage people to work harder without reminding them that nobody on living earth gives a fuck about what they're going through. And every human being is a selfish piece of meat garbage. And that honestly, um, we're all we got as individuals out there. What, what, what's the point? of reminding people that they should work harder for next to nothing because nobody gives a fuck anyway. What are you trying to say with this statement? And if nobody cares, why would maybe, I work harder? <laughs> maybe. No, thanks. It'd be easier for me to work harder if someone gave a fuck about what I'm going through. Thank you. What are you fucking talking about? Take that goddamn shirt off. <sighs> Maybe nobody cares about you, bitch, because you wear stupid shit like this. Perhaps. And it's always the motherfuckers that ain't even working hard. Anyway. <laughs> That's that. And then um, I also wanted to say um, I work hard and I work a lot. I work long hours. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't slept with intention in months. And what I mean by that is that I have passed out rather than going to sleep constantly i come home mm. i take my shoes off it's not going to and sleep. then five hours later <laughs> i realize asleep. i'm in the kitchen got you and i've been in the kitchen asleep on the floor mm. or on the living room floor or on the toilet Oh my God. And it's like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to go to sleep, oh not no. fall asleep. Oh no. So I say that to say, I'm not going to be dealing with anybody else's weird ass, pick me, victim ass energy when you don't get a vibe from me, when you don't get a response mm. when I don't come to kick it with you when I can't make it to the etc I'm operating on four hours of sleep and less average many not you know what I'm saying like mm -hmm. I barely have time to remember things for me <clears throat> I realized yesterday that I have a birthday coming up in a couple of weeks you do. and I don't know how old I am. <laughs> I completely <laughs> forgot what age I'm turning because what is life? So what you niggas are not going to do, especially let me say something. I cried real tears mm. a couple of weeks ago because I felt like I had neglected my mama and them. I hadn't checked in or gone to see them etc and it's and my mama and my dad were like it's fine you're you work great. hard you're doing great <laughs> it's great Woo, go you mm -hmm. like if they can clearly and truly understand that I love them, I'm busy, and be there for me in a way that can be supportive and understanding rather than being like, kiss our ass, bitch. I guess we're dead meat to you, honey. Then each and every one of you other niggas will get on board as well. And that's that on that. Mm -hmm. And the next one of you niggas to try and make me feel small for not having time mm -mm. when there are days where I forget I haven't had food. <laughs> you think you Jay. You are getting I'm hooking you to the back of my wheels of vocabulary mm -hmm. and I'm dragging your ass Across the nation. Amen. You better find somebody else to play with. Because I'm tired. Love you. Mm -mm. The only being you have to answer to is Link. 
And that's that. Everybody and that is else that. will have to fucking deal. <laughs> Link is the only one you are accountable to. <laughs> and much like, much like lots of women, I come home. <laughs> That bitch has done nothing. <laughs> Link is like, mm. I guess you're back. Yeah, I'm here still. Not that you thought about that. I'm working and all And then day. I go, you hungry? And she's like, nigga, of course I'm fucking hungry. And then I feed her and then we're best friends. So, mm-hmm. get in line. Okay, because my bitches are good. Yeah. Duh. And I'm done. Are you going to tell the people what you're working on? Because everybody knows, but you still won't say it. So I will say that this has been a great podcast. Thank you so much for listening. We're enjoying. Um, wow. Okay. Doing the podcast. Oh, so, so a great. That was and nothing else for you to say about what you've been so working so hard okay and he's been all right all he's been <laughs> working so hard a great time and that will yep. wrap up this week's episode mm-hmm. of the read check us out on yep. social media at this is the read our website is this is the read.com go to shop the read.com to find our merch um I'm assuming you have nothing else to say since you won't tell the people about this incredible project that I am so excited and proud of you for, but um, it's barely a secret. It's not. I will say though that not. I would like some um, uh, information or advice on um, scars. So I have a scar on my forehead. <gasps> um, Harry Potter. I. Oh my gosh, it is almost like a little hairy. It's not lightning shaped, but it's almost like that. But it looks very similar. It's in like the same space. And so um, this is humiliating, but it's also my truth. Angle your I head got down. a scar. Let me, see um, Let me see it. Oh, you can barely see it. Oh, I see it. The lighting is not great. I mean, no, I see it now. Right there. Yeah. I see it. So what had happened was, um, you know, in Miami, there are lizards. There are lots of lizards. I mean, lizards is like a, it's a Florida thing, right. especially South Florida. Lizards are all over the place. Right. Varying sizes um, and attitudes. Um, and so, uh, I've, lizards personally don't bother me. Like I've never, my mother is in, like deathly afraid of them mm. but i've never really i'm just like as long as you mind your business i mind my business is fine stay out of my house cool yep, and I but like outside i see a lizard i'm like oh hey girl whatever um but there's just something about the number of people who have just been commenting on the lizards who are not used to them and the size of some of them with fear that i had like i guess what i would uh, maybe a lucid dream the other day where there was there were numerous lizards on the ceiling above my bed while i was trying to get some rest i've never heard and anything more like, horrifying in my life oh my god <laughs> no i was like huh Mm-mm. what you guys doing up there and then the largest of them like fell on the bed but like he was like hanging by the front legs or whatever for a minute. So I had like a moment to be like, this nigga is about to touch down on my mattress. And so the lizard then like, that's like the size of my foot falls onto the bed and real life oh. me oh. Oh. um, freaks out, jumps out of the bed, but I'm still 65% sleep. So I then go careening into the wall face first. (laughs) I thought this was some weird lizard bite, but no. (laughs) Then, mind you, Link is on the floor on like a like a blanket that she I have in the corner on the bed or next to the bed. And so like I stumble over her 
smash my head into the wall. She hops up and is looking at me like, nigga, what the fuck? Like, what was that? And I'm just holding my face. Feeling like. I don't know how to verbalize the humiliation and confusion. Yeah. And I went to my face in the mirror and I did some uh, investigation. And uh, since the wound itself is healed and now we have a scar there. And so I'm trying to figure out what I can do to get my face back. Um, and uh, yeah, that's the lizard story. I don't understand how this happened. I'm again, not afraid of lizards, but I don't want to share a bed with them. And I blame niggas who mm-hmm. are afraid of lizards and have commented about their ferocity for that particular dream. Um, and I don't know why I couldn't have just popped up and been like, oh, it was a dream. <laughs> I had to vacate the bed oh, no. and go... Oh, no. Anyways. So, if you have, like, butters <laughs> or some sort of idea that could help me reclaim my skin, yeah, that would be yeah. helpful. Thanks. You, you will be just fine, but <laughs> the way I thought you had been viciously attacked, <laughs> but it was your own brain. Oh, no. That's, the lizards are fine. They yeah. just, they're just they more afraid of us than likewise. You know, likewise. that's what y'all then keep you have, saying, like, but... <laughs> There are. You have like little ones, but then also like with the closer you get to water and the bay and shit like that, the you know. No, thank you. Larger some of them because you have like smaller ones. It's like oh, that one's fine. And then you have Gojira. Like you will just be going down <laughs> them to the Walgreens or whatever, <laughs> and here comes this nigga waiting for the bus. No, thank you. Mm-mm. Six foot five right. with Nike sweats on. Looking like something that can be saddled up and rode to work. I don't think so. Mm-mm. I don't and I'm do just none like, of that. Oh, you got it. I hate I'm all just of walk it. Around you, I absolutely so. hate it. So yeah. That's the lizard story. I'm ashamed. Help. Rub you a That's little That's it for the podcast. A little shea butter or something on it. You'd be all right. Mm. <laughs> Ask your mama. Right. I bet she got some tonic or something. <laughs> I discovered concealer. Oh, oh yeah, but it doesn't. It really concealer. is not that bad. I think you're all right. Mm, okay. Well. All right. Well, if you have suggestions, send them to Kid Fury. And on that note, we will see y'all hoes next week. 